Hi, my name is Julia. I'm a member of the New York City Artist Coalition, and we have Deanna Mora with Friends and Lovers, and also Catherine Humphreyville and Christy Ortiz Lamb with Brooklyn Legal Services Corporation A. Um, we're here to talk about rent and what you should do about rent and your lease during the COVID-19 crisis since the first of the month is rapidly approaching and many people have zero income. Um, so we're gonna talk about both residential and commercial spaces. And we're going to cover prioritizing food over rent because surviving is more important than right now. And also having an open dialogue with your landlord because most of them actually know what's happening and are fully aware and hopefully willing to help. And also reminding you that there's an eviction moratorium, so you can't be evicted right now. As advocates, we've been fighting for commercial rent stabilization, which would limit rent increases for spaces already at risk. Now we need to cancel rent with a rent suspension. And we also need to know what our current rights are. So with that, I'm going to kick it over to um, Catherine and Christy to introduce yourselves. So I'm Christy Ortiz Lamb. I work with Brooklyn Legal Services Corporation A in the individual unit. That means we represent tenants in eviction proceedings as well as affirmative cases uh, like for repairs, uh, 7As, different other types of affirmative cases, illegal lockouts, post evicts, and that's what we do. Um, and I work with Christy um, at Brooklyn Legal Services Corporation A. Um, I work with the Commercial Lease Assistance Program. So we represent uh, small businesses in New York City in uh, com commercial lease issues that don't involve going to court. So this might include um, negotiating new leases or attempting to resolve disputes with landlords without going to court. Awesome. Okay. So I'm just going to kick it off. We have a few questions. Um, so what if I can't pay rent this month? What should I do and what can I expect that might happen? So we're fast approaching April 1st. And if you have, or you're in a predicament where you can't afford rent and you need to pay for other necessary items, toiletries, food, um, other things that are crucial to your health, then we would suggest that you pay for what is necessary in this crisis and then speak to your landlord, tell them the situation. And if in the event that you can't actually pay the rent going forward past April or May or June, then the city does have assistance for you. You can apply for a one-shot deal. You can apply for um, charity assistance, as well as possibly a fund coming down from the state or federal government to help you pay for your housing needs. Um, so for small businesses, as Christy said, um, April 1st is rapidly approaching, which is when many businesses pay rent. Um, and also the policy landscape is rapidly evolving. Um, what we would say is the best strategy is to talk to your landlord about the situation you're facing. Um, you know, commercial tenants everywhere are kind of probably facing similar predicaments to you where they are not able to operate their business or are operating at severely limited capacity or revenue. Um, as a commercial tenant, you're most likely still obligated to pay rent unless there is some sort of change in the law, whether it's, um, you know, rental assistance or something like that. But at this time, that doesn't exist. Um, you might be eligible for um, either a payroll support grant or a low, uh, a no interest loan from the city or a low interest loan for the federal government. Again, these resources are changing um, really rapidly. Uh, one thing to note, though, is that the courts are uh, closed for all but essential purposes right now. So whether you're a residential tenant or a commercial tenant, uh, your landlord won't be able to file a new eviction case against you at this time. That doesn't mean as a commercial tenant that you don't still owe rent or that your landlord couldn't later pursue an action against you for back rent. Um, but just for now, um, you know, the resources are changing. You might be eligible for something down the line, but um, it's really best to just to talk to your landlord about what's going on. 
I just want to add a little thing uh, in regards to residential tenants as well. They do have an obligation to pay rent that does not disappear because of this virus and this pandemic. So the possibility of them starting a non-payment proceeding is something that is possible in the future. Uh, as of right now, all evictions are stayed indefinitely and no new court proceedings can be filed until uh, an undetermined time. So, Okay, so... I, you know, speaking from my personal standpoint, I was able to reach out to my landlord, sent him an email, just said this is the reality, here's some of the rent, um, want to revisit the conversation as things develop. So how do we go about maybe negotiating or is there a form letter that we can send to our landlords kind of outlining the situations so that they know, they can believe and trust that we're trying to do what's right, but have to really choose between paying staff and paying rent. So in regards to paying staff and rent, I believe that's a Catherine question, but in regards to negotiating with your landlord, if this is a residential unit, then it's just basically being truthful, saying, hey, I got laid off my job. They're all working from home or they're not working at all. So I don't have the money to pay the rent. I am going to pay the rent the minute I have the funds. And just being open and transparent, I think that's the best uh, way to deal with this kind of situation. I think some of Chrissy's advice applies to commercial tenants as well. You know, I think a lot of landlords are definitely aware of what's going on with businesses being uh, shuttered. You can talk about, you know, that you've been a good tenant for however long you've been in the space, that you have a record of paying rent on time. Of course, this depends as to whether these things are true. You know, a lot of businesses face hardship in New York City, regardless of whether or not there's a, a virus uh, pandemic going around. Um, you can explain, you know, that the state has mandated that all non-essential businesses close or that even if your business is able to operate, uh, your revenue is being seriously harmed because of uh, the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, one other thing to point out is that um, banks in New York State are uh, waiving mortgages, mortgage payments for 90 days, I believe. So your landlord, while they still will need to pay those mortgage payments, ultimately, they're at least going to have a little bit of time to make those payments. And so, you know, they might have some wiggle room um, to allow you to pay rent later. Um, and then another thing I think that's worth noting um, is that the political landscape, as Christy and I were saying before, is rapidly evolving. And so it's possible that you could be eligible for some relief that would help you pay uh, rent at some point in the future, even if you can't um, pay it right now. Um, and again, the, that would include a no interest loan or payroll support grant from the city. Um, and a low interest loan from the federal government. Um, another thing that might be helpful to point out is that it would be really hard for your new your landlord to find a new tenant to move in immediately during this um, pandemic that would be able to pay rent um, and that they won't be able to take you to court. As Christy said, um, the courts aren't taking any new cases right now except in certain really narrow emergency circumstances. So because they wouldn't be able to take you to court anyway, there was kind of an incentive for them to figure this out um, without going to court. Um, the last thing I would point out is that if you do come to some sort of agreement with your landlord, it's probably a good idea to get it in writing if that's possible. That could mean, you know, some kind of signed document that says, you know, your landlord agrees to accept the reduced rent for, you know, April and May. Um, Sign both both you and your landlord. Emails are helpful as well. You know, even text messages. Um, there's just a requirement on a lot of commercial leases that any changes uh, be made in writing. Um, I will note though that a lot of landlords, especially when they're agreeing to accept like a reduced rent or something like that, might be reluctant to put stuff in writing. That makes sense. I just had a quick follow up question. Um, if I don't have a good relationship with my landlord. Should I still send that letter saying, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay. I want to work something out. Yes. I think it's, it's really good idea to kind of keep people in the loop, keep your landlord in the loop. Um, 
And I know there's very litigious relationships between landlords and tenants, particularly if there's previous eviction proceedings or uh, repair issues that have been ongoing for a long time. This is a, a very, I guess, good opportunity for landlords and tenants to kind of resolve the underlying issues that they may have because we're all facing this crisis together. So that could be a way to just kind of getting over the hump. So I, I would still suggest them to send out a letter. Yeah, I would agree with Christy. I mean, you know your relationship with your landlord better than anyone else. And so you might know what sorts of things work and what sorts of things don't. Um, and just in relation to a letter, um, we're hoping to have a form letter through the Commercial Lease Assistance Program that we'll be able to uh, circulate to different um, commercial tenants, um, which we'll definitely share with the New York City Artists Coalition. Um, but, you know, that might not be the right approach for your landlord. And so um, consider kind of what your relationship has been with them ongoing. And so if you normally contact them via email, maybe you want to send them an email rather than a letter. If you normally talk on the phone, you know, consider all of those factors of your personal relationship. Great. Um, what if I want to break my lease right now? What should I do? I think breaking your lease uh, is something that you should think about any other time. It's uh, not just because of the crisis. So the factors that you should consider in, in regards to breaking your lease is that you have to mitigate basically the damages. So when you break a lease, you're basically stating I'm not going to pay the remainder of the, le the rental amount. So if I have six months left, under the obligation of the lease, you're technically liable for those six months of rent. So a way to break your lease is to ensure that you have an agreement with the landlord where you find someone else to cover that rent or the landlord allows you to move out with a waiver of all the rent that's outstanding. Uh, without that waiver, I would suggest that you not break your lease because you're going to be on the hook for rent that you're not going to be enjoying, basically an apartment that you're not going to enjoy. Um, so for small businesses, I think whether you want to break your lease is ultimately like a business decision of, you know, whether or not you want to cut your losses or whether or not you want to continue in the space. Um, one thing I would say in this environment is consider just like taking a deep breath, you know, maybe waiting a few days or a week, see what potentially form of relief comes out, you know, your business uh, won't be shuttered forever. And so if you can maybe negotiate something with your landlord for, you know, for example, a reduced rent, um, that might be one option versus breaking your lease entirely. Um, if you do decide um, to break your lease, though, um, uh, there's currently no policy in effect related to COVID-19 that waives any sort of penalties for terminating a commercial lease. Um, so the like as Christy was saying with a residential lease with a commercial lease you would your um, whether you sign your lease in your business entity name or your commercial entity name uh, whatever uh, person or entity the the business's lease uh, the name of that entity will be on the hook for that amount of rent um, and that can be a lot of money for a commercial lease because. Rents in New York City are really expensive for businesses, and also the terms are often longer. Um, so you might want to try to negotiate, uh, again, similar to what Christy was saying, something with your landlord um, to reduce kind of what your liability uh, might be. Um, consider whether it's in your personal name or your business's name, because if it's in your business's name, you're going to have some protection um, from your landlord going after you as an individual for it. But if it's in your personal name, you know, if you have, um, if you own a car, for example, your landlord could theoretically try to collect um, on the debt that you owe and, you know, your car might be at risk. That's just one example. Um, and then even if you signed your lease in your entity's name, um, consider whether or not you signed a personal guarantee for the lease. Um, the guarantee might uh, create uh, contain what's called a good guy clause, um, which is basically a clause that says if you give notice a certain number of days in advance um, and vacate the space, then you're not personally on the hook uh, for the remaining rent, even if the business is. Um, the only thing I would say that might be tricky about good guy clauses um, 
And again, this is why it might be helpful to talk to a lawyer. Uh, we provide free services through the Commercial Lease Assistance Program to income qualified small businesses in New York. Um, uh, so it's, it might be helpful to have a lawyer look at it. But sometimes good guy clauses say that you have to otherwise be kind of current on the rent and in compliance with the lease at the time you give notice, which because so many small businesses are having trouble paying rent right now, it might be hard to meet those requirements. But again, it's really specific as to what is in your lease. And so it's hard, kind of hard to know without looking at the lease itself. And what do you do if you already received an eviction notice, but the courts are closed? So in regards to eviction proceedings, it is suspended indefinitely until the crisis uh, is abated. Uh, that means so if you got a marshal's notice, generally it would be 14 days before you would be evicted, and you would have to file an order to show cause to stop the eviction. However, because there is no evictions happening in the city, um, and you can definitely report any marshal that tries to evict you because there is a mandate by the governor stating that all evictions are suspended. Um, if you receive it, it will ba basically be on pause. So nothing will happen as long as the suspension is in place. Yeah, and I think the same goes uh, for commercial tenants as well as residential tenants. You know, if your landlord has already taken you to court, um, you're you're not going to get evicted while um, the stay that Christy referred to from the governor is in effect. Um, but you know the proceedings can restart um, once the moratorium is lifted. So just keep that in mind. If you had a coming court date, um, that court date is probably going to be uh, delayed. And so even if you've just like gotten a notice, but you haven't had a court date yet, whatever notice is on. Um, whatever date is on that notice, it's probably not going to be applicable, but it's a good idea to kind of check the court websites um, to see, you know, if and when they are, I mean, eventually when, but if they're reopening anytime soon. Um, yeah. Another thing to add to that is I would do like a weekly check-in with the marshal. Uh, you could do it like every Monday or every Tuesday where you call in and you ask, is the moratorium still in effect? Is the pause still in effect? That is a easy way of checking in. Um, another thing is that it eventually will start up again. Um, in that instance, then you have to file an order to show cause. The order to show cause has to be filed in the courthouse. And so if the courthouse is still closed, then you don't have the relief. And so most likely the moratorium will be in place until the courthouse opens again. Um, I think also you could possibly call 311 to find out instead of calling the marshal. So that's another way of finding out whether the moratorium is still in place. Okay. Um, when we had the business interruption meeting the other day, someone had brought up uh, the fact that some commercial leases, and I don't know if this also is applicable to residential leases, has a they have a clause called force majeure. I don't know if you guys know what that is, or if you can explain that to us. So I'm actually going to let Catherine, because I don't know. Yeah, so, um, and I don't, I don't know if they're in residential leases or not. Um, a force majeure clause is kind of a fancy uh, legal term, where it basically means that there's some sort of intervening act that renders uh, performance of a contractual clause impossible. So uh, a lot of times these are called like acts of God, which is actually a legal term, believe it or not. Um, you know, war, uh, government action, some kind of natural disaster or something like that. Um, oftentimes in commercial leases, they are called inability to perform is like the heading on the section of a lease. So if you if you're looking for kind of headers in your lease, force majeure, um, or uh, inability to perform are two things you could look for. It could also be called something else. Um, it's important to remember that every commercial lease is different. Um, so not all of these clauses are going to say the same thing. Um, so, um, but broadly it's things that are happening that are beyond the landlord and tenants control. Um, these clauses, while they're in many, many leases, they're construed really narrowly. So it's unlikely that you don't have to pay rent as a result of this clause. Okay. 
I think that, so those are all the questions that we have so far. Um, thank you guys so much for answering our questions. And if people have further questions, um, they can email the Artist Coalition and, um, and Brooklyn Legal Services Corporation and we'll provide that information. Yeah, you can email business at bka.org, which is for small business issues. Great. You can email info at bka.org as well. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Great. So in summary, here's what we learned. If you have to choose between rent, food, choose food. It's always important to, to prioritize your survival over rent. We can always figure out how to work out the rent situation later on. There are options for that. Also, if you can have an honest dialogue with your landlord, that's super important, but then also have that in, in writing so that you can make sure that it's all documented and you're safe. Also, try to avoid breaking your lease if possible because you'll still be on the hook for that future uh, rent money. Um, and also, though, you can't be evicted until the courts open up and the eviction moratorium is over. And if you have any further questions, feel free to contact us. Thanks. Thank you.